How strongly does this rate for you? You are a god or a goddess who's forgot that they were a god or a goddess. You have spiritual amnesia. You forgot the spiritual gifts that you had. You abandoned your sovereignty and your spiritual knowledge through years of brainwashing and programming. But now you're becoming aware, you're turning online. Let's just say you're more wired in. And because we are on a similar frequency, you found this channel. Because you're also tapping in to the similar frequency that I'm tapping into, which is the frequency of flow, of being completely absorbed into something. Have you ever felt that, man? Where you're completely absorbed, the subject and the object dissolves. For instance, if I play this, you know, hand pan instrument, understand that after a while, if I truly let go into this, if I truly allow myself to dissolve into this, I will become this hand pen. Okay, that's what I'm trying to say. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Ooh, what does this button do? You better fucking click it. Okay, I'm not even fucking joking right now. You better fucking click it. All right, thanks. So recently I was asked a question around the five parts of the soul and what the ancient Egyptians believed, okay? Let's start with a little bit of context before that. All right, so I wanna just clarify something right away. Someone said the profile picture of a dinosaur, okay? That is not a dinosaur, my friend, okay? I'm not a prehistoric being, though I probably have been at a certain point in time, but we don't know that. Can't confirm that with data science, so whatever. I am, however, connected to the spirit or the essence of the Makara, okay? The Makara is a sea monster of the Vedas. So understand, he's the gatekeeper, he's the one that holds the key, the wisdom, and helps the gods to travel. That's my role in the spiritual world. You see, I heal and remind people of their greatest strengths. So the ancient Egyptians believed in using natural laws. They had a lot of medical texts with spells in them, charms in them. There were women who were like seers that could even conceive when a woman was giving birth and things like this, okay? Kemet coming from ancient Egypt, you know, that um, sense of, you know, the, the black soil that was found uh, on ancient Egypt. Where, that's where the word alchemy comes from, right? So if you really think about it, we are stars. We are crystallized carbon put under pressure. Think about that. That's what brought us here. We are the diamonds in the rough. Or another way to think about it is we are pieces of the sun. We think we're sons and daughters of the earth, but we're actually more so seekers and children of the sun. Well, I'm just revealing some of the deep insights. And again, this is coming from my own filter, right? Of me as a shaman. So already understand that. This is my understanding of it. I might not be 100% accurate. I'm not like some kind of, you know, Egyptian scholar. However, this is what I've experienced. And I think that's most important is you learn based on experience. Egypt is the land of the secrets, the land of the mystery schools, the first initiatory mystery schools. I would say emojis are like modern hieroglyphics. I think um, directed intuition was very, very key as a big teaching there. And they used a lot of magical incantations and instruments that could aid in the healing process, okay? They used protective amulets, for instance, to ward off evil spirits. The greatest aim of the mystery school was to attain higher consciousness. Everything else was a waste of time. That's what we choose to focus on in Primal Sutra. For us to attain that higher consciousness so more is possible, we can manifest faster, we can live the life that we truly envision for ourselves. You'll notice that a lot of ancient Egyptian gods and goddesses have animal heads. They had this belief that divine powers were manifested through the animals and the animal realm. For instance, we have things that we say in popular culture like, 
as clever or as smart as a fox, right? So Thoth, who was like an ibis-headed being, who we're connected to in our path working, Primal Sutra, was the creator of all language. He was known as Jehuti in the Egyptian temple sciences. It was even said that Jesus might have been one of Thoth's students, okay? There's some speculations around that, which I find very fascinating. Our themes, right, the resurrection of Jesus, resurrection of Osiris, like there is uh, a lot of um, similarities and symbolism and overlap that we can come across, especially the symbolism, right? I once came across this uh, hieroglyphic that was basically saying that you can turn into a snake in the afterlife, and I thought about that. I was like, hmm, but I am a snake in this life and, and every lifetime, you know what I mean? Not a snake snake, but like a naga, you know what I mean? Uh, which is like the Indian um, serpentine beings, let's just say half serpent, half human. And so my human side, of course, has a lot of compassion and so forth. But my naga side is just like, a. Hey, Let's go. Enough is enough. You're ready to evolve. Okay, it's that, right? So the Naga side of my brain has like this very looming um, dark energy, right? And then I have a lighter side of my beingness that is very graceful, very easy going, very effortless, very light very expansive, right? Like abundance would be the other one. I'm still finding out ways to interpret this data into my physical beingness and into my material world because that's really what they were doing. They were manifestors, okay? When they said lead into gold, I mean, essentially they were saying, how can we materialize this, this idea, right? This concept, how can we materialize this into the physical plane? So here's another interesting thing, mummification. You would mummify these pharaohs so that they could be recognized in the afterlife. Yeah, it's, it's just a very interesting idea or concept, right? I think that everybody has their own, you know, beliefs and religious belief. And, but I think that actually, honestly, guys, I think religious pride is what is a lot of downfall, okay? When you're saying my way is the only way, it's the only answer, that causes a lot of world wars and crusades and, you know, religious wars and so forth. And so that's why, like, as an omnist, I believe that is the true path because it is like, you know, you're, you're finding a shred of truth in everything and you're not, like, agnostic or whatever. You're not choosing to, like, take your hands off of the wheel of the spiritual process. You're becoming more connected through you being more spiritual. What does that mean though? Just to be conscious, more connected into your waking life. Like a giant amphitheater being projected from your conscious like Ajna point, right? It's just projecting outwards and bringing in all the blessings and dismantling all the curses. So let's talk about the five dimensions of the soul, okay? In Egyptian magic. I want to mention this particular being's name that we've come across, which is Heka. Some uh, also spell it as Haik. Heka is the personification of magic itself. Okay, so start to understand that. The simplest concept to understand is Ren, number one. And this is literally your name. Okay? If you change your name, you change your soul, a part of it one-fifth of it you get that so if you determine your name yes i was given a parental name right that my parents ascribed to me perhaps from a monk lineage sumedho the the buddhist monk or you know ajan sumedho um but sumed is basically it means ritual fire okay and it has its own bengali connotations from shujogo okay which is um Important to understand, if you're, if you're ever looking at your name, there's a lot to extract from the name itself, okay? So look up the origin of your name. What does it mean? What is the symbolism? What culture does it come from? If you're like a mixed mutt, you know, American girl, you're probably like, I don't know, maybe I should, you know, do a 23andMe or whatever, right? If I find out where I'm actually from. Maybe I'm like 6%, you know, Hispanic or something, and I don't know that side of me. But that's there, you can tap in. If it's there, you can tap in, okay? 
Very important to know. Me personally, I don't want to give my DNA to anybody, but that's just me. Um, yeah, well, that's not true in a sexual context, he's saying. I agree with you, BBA. Number one is your name, Rem. Okay. Oh, Red. Okay, that's how you remember it. I'm making you laugh because you're going to remember it better. Two is Shu. Okay, no, I'm just playing. Um, two is Ka, okay, from Heka. Ka is the vital difference between life and death, the spiritual essence between life and death. It's basically spirit, essence, ether, okay? It is, well, Heka is also magical powers, right? We have Ib. Ib is literally the heart, okay? It's formed from a single drop of clotted blood extracted from your mother's heart at the hour of conception of your birth. They did not just mean the organ, the heart. They also meant the heart being the seat of the soul. Okay, so they really believed in the heart space and heart magic. A lot of people think that they didn't. Your heart is a part of your soul, almost, you can think about it. Okay, that's kind of cool to, you know, really ponder. Okay, we're mystic scientists up in here in Primal Sutra. Okay, we're really thinking about this in different ways. We have very tapped in individuals listening and watching right now in the audience. Okay, I know it. I know it because otherwise, why would you gravitate towards this kind of information? Join our mystery school, okay? Primal Sutra Mystery School, where you get to learn more like this, but also through the deities themselves. Wouldn't it be cool for me to, you know, let's say, speak in a different accent to mine and tap into a completely different beingness? And having you witness that and watch that, the way that I tap in, the most important thing is before I tap in, you guys actually get to see how I channel, right? How I get into the zone. Sometimes I'll burn incense. Sometimes I'll just get right into it, right? But every time it's a different shift. Well, then we have Ba, okay? Ba is basically what makes us unique and different. It is a hungry motivational force, okay? It's our rare breed quality of driving forward and creating momentum. You get what I mean? It's like our unique way that we seek and find that motivation. Your motivation is not the same as mine. It is a completely different realm. It's a different soul experience. You get that? I personally think a part of the soul is character. And that's just my, you know, two cents into this. I think content is not king. I think character is king. Character and having an integrity and having, you know, somebody who understands their own structure of their own mind which is understanding the structure of your own soul okay and once you get that you can really start to tap in a lot easier and make this a natural part of your life where you start evolving then we have shoot okay it's like saying so cute together right like i can imagine like some girl doing that like completely with her friends Girl, you're so shoot today. Uh, the way you remember this is shoot is like your your shadow. It's probably pronounced like shoot or something like that, right? More Egyptian sounding, but I just like shoot, you know? It's just cute. It's just cute. So I think like the shoot is like a hologram of all like the parts of you that you've repressed, right? In a sense, it's almost like the other you, right? It's polar opposite you. And that's why people who are at your polar opposite piss you off a lot. They're your, they're your walking manifestations of your shadow. You get that? So shadow and soul, is so, and understand the shadow is also a part of your soul, one fifth of it. So I like this concept, man. I like to use it in my own life. I don't know if it resonates with you at all, but let's clarify, okay? Ren is name, Ka is like essence or energy. Ib is the heart. Ba is our elemental unique force. And shoot is your shadow. Ah, okay, the Primal Sutra deities are saying something now. They're basically saying an animal is very different when, and this is from the uh, Egyptian teachings, they're saying, an animal behaves very differently if they're, let's say, nocturnal and so forth, right? So let's say that you are an animal who is during the day, you're performing in a certain way. You'll notice when the, by the time nighttime hits, you behave, you start behaving very differently. According to that, you can understand whether you're more so a light being, a dark being, and so forth, okay? Also, let's say that you're a blackbird in the lights, and as it gets nighttime, or you go more into your darkness, which is what? Going into your shadow or your subconscious mind, you completely alter your personality, right? So that personality shift is also you 
going into the subconscious realms. So that makes your personality more malleable, you could say. And this is, again, very, very deep teachings from Primal Sutra, okay? So, man, I'm very generous to you guys. I realize that, man. I've gotten a lot of messages from people where people are, like, crushing it and, like, you know, changing their lifestyles and, you know, growing businesses, all from these videos. Like, that's fantastic. That's what I want to hear and that's what I want to see, man. Okay, whatever my uh, net amount is worth online doesn't mean shit to me, okay? I mean, think about it. I was born on the 26th, eight, that's wealth, you know? Shit bound to happen, boom. And that reminds me, I have to pay a phone bill for $1,000 or so. Do you guys get that? You guys, I'm not obsessed with talking to people on the phone, okay? That's not how it happened. When I went to Costa Rica, I set up a, a phone plan with this thing. Uh, Vodafone or whatever and I turned it on right and by the time I get back I realize it's not even working it's not even turned on or whatever and um, yeah and they charged me like 77,000 something rupees so now I have to go pay that so you know that's a bit of a enemy year problem right <laughs> like, right like uh, if you guys know about the Chinese zodiac and enemy year right but anyway, um, besides that point, I'm going to win irregardless of these little minor setbacks. It's a minor setback, bro. Bro, I don't want to admit this to myself because it sounds very cocky. Okay, it sounds very cocky to speak about yourself like this. But I really envision myself as being some kind of a genius. Okay, not in the sense of an IQ test, not like that. But I'm a genius in the sense I'm creating something that's never been done. And uh, we're really going here. We're really figuring it out. We're figuring out the secrets of raising your consciousness level. And um, as you can start doing that, we can almost put people in these echo chambers. That's my vision, at least, as we start to assist people's awakenings, you know, really help them out. Because it's a really rough time when, you know, your whole identity is dissolving and you don't know what to do. You can't let go. And it's tough to let go, you know. But that loss is what's keeping you stuck. Let me tell you, man. Because loss, guess what? Loss is scarcity. You get that? And that goes way deeper. That comment goes way deeper, you know, than I've ever meant it to be. And maybe some of you sense that. You know, when the Buddha came in and taught Zen, right? Through just a flower. And so, some person got that teaching, right? That was the beginning of Zen wisdom or whatever. That's kind of my presence, is, is through these videos, some people are going to understand the essence, the vibe, okay? The flower. Some people are going to get the flower teachings, and other people are going to ignore this video, you know? Skim past it. Yeah, what, what do I need to know about the dimensions of the soul for, you know? I mean, I have KFC in it, you know? I have a butler outside. I have my toenails waxed or whatever, you know? Get out of here, you bozo. Anyway, <laughs> have an incredible day. May the flow be with you and stay legendary. We're all going to win. We're going to take over. Trust Primal Sutra. Let's get it.